During the week, the National Assembly postponed the passage of next year's budget. Senate President Ahmed Lawa said there were errors in the budget estimates as submitted by President Muhammadu Buhari. Our well, rights correspondent Georgina Ndukwezaika has more in this report. Hopes that the 2023 appropriation bill will be passed on Thursday has been dashed as the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, announced at plenary that there are irreconcilable figures detected by the appropriation committees of both chambers of the National Assembly. The Senate President came on the heels of an earlier announcement that the bill will be passed Thursday before the chamber adjourns for the Christmas recess. When our committees on appropriation in the Senate and the House started to reconcile the figures of what we have done and what was presented, the problems became very obvious and they were not easy to deal with. And therefore, our committees had to start a process of cleaning up the, the bill first. That process, of course, also engaged the executive arm because uh, the problem came from there. Was concluded yesterday, only yesterday. And our committee secretariats are not able to finish processing the budget for us to take today, nor tomorrow. Both chambers of the National Assembly will hold a special session on Wednesday, December 28, 2022, to consider and then pass the 2023 Appropriation Bill alongside the 2022 Finance Bill and the 819.5 billion Naira 2022 Supplementary Budget. Let me advise the executive. The bills that have come to us the ways and means, the supplementary appropriation, the finance bill, whoever is invited to come and explain, give information or any details for the National Assembly to understand must do so because it's not our work alone. We want to do our work thoroughly we want to understand whatever we are going to deal with and our decisions we want to be based on information and time is of essence. In the meantime, the chairman of the Senate Appropriation Committee has directed the committees on works, finance and water resources to work on the supplementary budget submitted by the executive and forward same to the Appropriation Committee as soon as possible. Georgina Ndukwezaika. Arise News. Well, to talk more on this issue and the landmark legislations of the Green Chambers in the year 2022, we're now being joined by Honorable Shamsuddin Dambazau, representing Takai Somalia Federal Constituency of Kano State. And from our offside studio, we have Chima Christian, a public policy analyst. Gentlemen, very warm welcome to Newsnight. And let me start with you, uh, Sham uh, Sudin, uh, particularly the reasons adduced for the budget uh, not being passed, the errors. And uh, some analysts are saying that the errors are far reaching uh, to you know, even send the entire budget back uh, to the uh, presidency. Are these, do you share in such uh, thoughts? Thank you very much. First of all, I want to wish our viewers a uh, Merry Christmas in advance and also a Happy New Year in advance. Everybody have a happy holiday. Um, as you know, these um, things happen quite frequently. The executive drafts and suggests the budget to us. It is up to the National Assembly to vet and go through to make sure that everything is intact, especially when we look at um, our current income and income to debt ratio. We have to consider all these things and then we have to look at the ongoing projects. We need to see what are the priorities in society at the moment. And so looking at the budget, there were some issues that were 
observed mainly by the chairman of the appropriation committees of the upper and the lower house and the leadership deemed it fit to make these corrections so that we don't go and have issues down the line where we need to come back and start reviewing the budget or having huge deficits that will lead the government into um, uh, acquiring more loans which will ultimately be on top on the on the nigerian citizens so the um, house has adjourned till the 28th of december where all the corrections have already been made and um, by god's grace we will pass the budget on the 28th hmm. well you you say that uh, you know the corrections have been made but let me go now and speak to chima who is in our offside studio chima if you look at the time frame between when this report of errors being noticed in the budget and now that it said they've cleaned it up that's the language being used at the national assembly do you think a thorough job must have been done and are you optimistic just like the honorable that you know before the 31st of december that this budget will be passed and nigeria will get a new budget circle going into the new year well it's fair to point out to nigerians that this is the last budget that this current session of the national assembly will consider uh, some of the members who are considering that budget are studying for re-election and some of them are even aspiring for bigger offices. So um, Nigerians are also aware of the uh, back and forth between the executive and the legislature that usually happens uh, during uh, budget defenses and budget considerations. So I expect them to have a lot of backroom deals. Uh, back channel discussions between the executive and the uh, uh, legislature. Uh, but beyond that, if we are talking about scrutinizing the budget, if we are talking about passing a budget that meets the earnings and aspirations of Nigerians, um, all we have to look at is the three budgets that have been passed by this session of the National Assembly to draw inferences as to what might happen in the last one that they will consider. And uh, in the eyes of Nigerians, uh, this session of the National Assembly has not done more enough to justify their remits. Well, I'm sure Sh Sharm Sudin uh, is going to take you very copiously on that. Let's look at uh, 2022, the Ninth Assembly. You are on uh, the last uh, lap, I mean, by May 29, uh, they're about to be having uh, a new government and uh, a new uh, National Assembly. How would you score your, the performance of uh, the national legislators uh, in this outgoing year? I know one high point you're going to mention is the Electoral Act. What other acts uh, would you say uh, that has really helped revolutionize the society economically, socially, and uh, politically. Thank you very much. Um, of course, like you mentioned, quite rightly, the Electoral Act is monumental because it has um, brought some, a level of sanity to the processes that we use to help our leaders emerge in society. Um, when it differs from the past where there was so much dictatorship going on and, and now we have um, a situation where rigging has been brought down to the minimum, especially with the Beaver system. Uh, and then we have the PIB, which is now the PIA, which was passed into law and 20 years, for 20 years we've been working on it as a legislature and finally it came to pass. Um, this has helped to bring the unbundling of the NNPC and hopefully remove the hands of the government from directly interfering in the way these resources are managed and allocated. Um, we, there are also, we won't sit down and say that there aren't changes that will come in the future because there have to be amendments here and there, especially when we go into things like gas flaring and, and the pollution and when we come to talk about the host communities and the- Particularly the funds uh, that the they funds, are getting here, exactly. you know, that's still very so, contentious. So we need to, if you look at, there's something controversial where it states that if there is any vandalism in a certain in a community, the host the community loses that access to the funds in the trust. Now we could have instances where the IOCs could deliberately, um, through conspiracy, cause situations where they would not have to remit those monies by causing damage themselves, etc. 
So these are things that we need to look at closely. Um, apart from that, um, if we look at even what the speaker himself has done in terms of trying to mitigate the issues between the ASU and the federal government, I think that is one huge score as well that should be looked at closely. Um, we've also had an amendment to the National um, Health Act of 2014, which has now in brought inclusion for the poorest Nigerians to have access to those funds so that um, women anywhere in any community where there is a hospital or clinic that provides national health insurance services, then women can go and give birth for free. People can get treated for malaria and all these common um, illnesses that usually prevail um, within our societies. So these are things that I think we have really right. made um, considerable progress on. Well, Shamsuddin, I was waiting for you to mention the National Health Act bill because you were quite, you know, <laughs> integral in that bill. I know how passionate you had spoken about it in the past. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I would like you to actually, you know, um, score the National Assembly. Yes, you've raised a lot of, you know, wins that the Ninth uh, Assembly, especially in the lower chamber, got. But of course, the women in Nigeria are not happy, mm -hmm. especially with the Green Chambers. Okay. Three gender bills were thrown out amongst other things. Even the Speaker of the House of Representatives is saying, you know, the constitutional amendment, it might not happen at the expiration of this assembly. So talk to us, if you had an opportunity to score the night assembly that you are a part of, how well would you truly say you performed? Well, first I want to let you know that I, for one, believe in empowering, empowering women. Um, I grew up in a household where I saw my father doing the same thing, my grandfather, the same thing. And so in my family, my sisters, the, my, one of my sisters is a doctor. One of them has two master's degrees. Another one also just graduated and from her master's. So I, I am part of that. And I believe strongly in the empowerment of women. Now, if those bills did not pass, you have to understand that there are systems of checks and balances that are used to scrutinize documents. And if they do not pass the litmus test, then it is up to the sponsors of the bill to go back and the, how many bills have we sent to the presidency that they haven't been assented to? It is because there are certain criteria that have not been met. There are certain interests that have not been considered. Um, I would score this ninth assembly nine over 10, simply mm -hmm. because we have put in place historical and monumental bills, especially the PIA and the Electoral Act. Of All right. I mean, uh, uh, just like Achebe said, when the uh, Agama lizard falls from uh, the high Roko tree, looks left <laughs> and right, uh, he's going to nod his head in uh, concomment that, yes, I've done great. Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, let, let's uh, get uh, Chima, who is a public uh, affairs analyst. Chima, what are your thoughts? The Ninth Assembly, have they done spectacularly well to score such an alpha, 9 over 10? Well, we could have just added one and then made it 10 over 10, and then that would be a perfect <laughs> score, right? Um, in my view, and then possibly in the views of many Nigerians, uh, the National Assembly, especially this session of the National Assembly, is not rated so highly. Uh, comparatively, I think that the previous National Assembly performs, uh, in many indices, uh, performed better than this uh, session of the National Assembly. Uh, you cannot discuss Nigeria's economy you cannot discuss, discuss Nigeria's uh, uh, debt profile, for instance. You cannot discuss the insecurity in Nigeria, for instance, without pointing. Yes, of course, you will point fingers as the executive arm of the government, whose responsibility it is to execute policies. But the National Assembly, by laws empowering them, have oversight functions, uh, uh, responsibilities over the executive. And then when you ask questions as to how they have been able to deploy all the powers that they are constitutionally assigned to them in trying to be on the side of the Nigerians, one on the economy, two on the parts of security. I think it was last year that we saw, I can't remember on which of floors of the uh, National Assembly, that we saw one of the lawmakers shedding tears about insecurity. And I did ask then, um, you know, when ordinary people are shed shedding tears, the National Assembly should not join us in shedding tears uh, because there are powers that are constitutionally assigned to them to review our laws, to invite, uh, and by the way, it's not an anathema to invite the president to review his security protocol uh, 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 if we feel that he hasn't been doing quite well on that. And then, um, but, but you see people who have not used all the powers allocated to them. Today, 
There is this fear that Nigeria's debt profile is going to fall off the cliff. Look at what is happening to Ghana. Ghana, which is a stone throw from here, is having a debt default. And Nigeria could get to that cliff. And then when you look at all the borrowings, whether you're talking about ways and means, whether you're talking about multilateral debts, whether you're talking about local components of those debts, all of these debts must be sent, reviewed, and approved by National Assembly. So if you're talking about the executive arm of the government acquiring possibly bad debts for Nigeria, then you have to drop some blame at the heap of the people who have assigned to review and approve those requests. And for me, the National Assembly uh, may score itself highly, but uh, uh, they, they've not scored highly in my view. Uh, okay. So if you, on a rate of 3 to 10, I think I'll give them 3. Uh, 1 to 10, I, I'll give them a rate of 3. That's a far cry from the 9 over 10, which Shamsuddin had actually, you know, scored the night assembly. But of course, you know what, um, Shamsuddin, let me come to you right now. The fact that when um, this night assembly was sworn in, um, it was seen, especially with the emergence of Bajabia, Mila and Wase as the speaker and deputy speaker, and even at the Red Chamber as well, that the executive... Um, now have allies in the night assembly especially when you compare how tumultuous you know that relationship was in the eighth assembly um some would have expected that that would lead to some sort of leeway where you know having allies will see more bills being passed especially bills that would affect the ordinary nigerian you've heard chima he says the national assembly did not think about the ordinary nigerian yes a lot of bills were passed but those that really affect the Nigerian people, the ordinary Nigerians, maybe you didn't do so well there. Your reaction to that? Well, um, I would beg to differ. I think Chima is wrong because the National Assembly is comprised and composed of ordinary Nigerians. We are from among them, and it is the same Nigerians that sent us to represent them. So whatever we do in the House is a representation, as you can see in the nomenclature. It's a representation of what Nigerians want. And of course, there is no way you can get everything right. The National Assembly stands as a system for checks and balances, especially on what the executive does. Now, if we, if we craft a thousand bills and send them forward and they don't get assent assented to, you cannot fault the blame on the National Assembly. Now, if if you want to say the Eighth Assembly was more controversial and the, the things that happened that are, have led to what the situation that Nigeria is in now, because at that time the budgets were running into, we would get to July before the budget would get passed. And then by then you've already put Nigerians into deep debt. The government has taken debt because there is no act to support the funding of projects. And that is what snowballed into what we are suffering, which was a deliberate plan to bring this. But of course, in any situation, you have to take responsibility. And that is why the government, especially the APC itself, which is the ruling party, has taken responsibility to make sure that these things are resolved. Of course, it will take time, but we are on the way. OK, let me still uh, start with you. Uh, about the constitutional amendments which uh, started uh, at the birth of democracy in this country. One of the fathers of uh, that uh, uh, constitution is even saying that uh, it is littered with several errors. Billions upon billions upon billions of Naira is being spent by the National Assembly in the hope of, uh, or all in uh, constitutional amendment and this amendment is still pending only few states have signed particularly uh, when it comes to local government uh, autonomy even though it's captured in the constitution but to separate uh, their accounts you know instead of the uh, governor or the uh, government at uh, the lower rank being uh, the supervising uh, governor. W why are we, or why, you know, are the state uh, assemblies finding it difficult to accede to the constitutional amendments that the National Assembly has carried out? Shamsuddin? Thank you. Well, you see, the, there are issues, and this is why a lot of times I've been saying that we, we need to, the main issue in Nigeria is the internal democracy. We need to really 
go back and look at what is happening and how people emerge within the party. And this will, because if there is no level of independence from the standpoint of where you're doing your work, then at any given time, it's almost like you're like a hunting dog. So um, because of that, you will see these types of things happening. But for me, as I speak personally, and also I know for the party that I represent, is that we are for the local governments to get funding. That is why poverty is prevalent in this country. Now, you can't be, as a state governor, um, hoarding the funds that should go to the local governments, especially when we look at the fact that primary education is directly under the local government. I remember I had a conversation with the Minister of Education about what was going on specifically in the north. And he told me his hands were tied because it's the local governments that are in charge of this. So we need to put in more effort, lobbyist groups need to step up, more consultations, more contact needs to be made to make sure that the rest of the house, um, state houses of assembly comply to this amendment. And I want Nigerians to understand one thing. Even though we are the guardians of the constitution, when we speak about the amendment of the constitution, it is an activity for all Nigerians. That is why there are public hearings. That's why you can write petitions. You can make submissions. You, you can go under political action groups. You can political action committees to come up and really put in your request and step forward that this is what you require as a Nigerian to be amendment, amended in the constitution. So um, with that, I believe that if we put our hands together, everything will go well. Well, we all have to put our hands together to make sure everything goes well. That's what uh, Shamsuddin Dambazo is saying tonight. Gentlemen, this is a place where we say thank you so much for coming tonight. Honorable Shamsuddin Dambazo, representing Takai Maila, Federal Constituency of Kano State. He's not returning to the National Assembly. Thank you for joining us tonight. And also Chima Christian, a public policy analyst. Gentlemen, thank you for your in-depth analysis tonight. And